Hello and welcome to Tech Driven. My name is Jagger and I am here to give you the news this week as it's a slow news week. Today on the show we're going to talk about Cyberpunk 3080's edition of the card that we're gonna, they're going to be giving away as well as the 3060 Ti came out this week and for some reason there is a 3090 blower edition that Asus made. All that and more and stick around. Plus I want treats. NZXT this week has announced that they have a new fire case. Quite literally, it is catching on fire, and it's a case that has been on the market for a little bit this year, the H1. Now, NZXT is no uh, stranger to bad airflow and bad temperatures with their cases, as they have completely closed off fronts, minimal ventilation, and recently, I would say, subpar build quality compared to some of their older products. But the H1 has been literally catching on fire, um, just increasing their temperatures and just making their cases that much hotter. Uh, but in all seriousness, it is a real safety concern and they're labeling it as a safety issue with the H1 where it is a more than a safety issue. It's a manufacturing defect and they are recalling their cases and asked retailers to pull the cases from their shelves until the issue is fixed. Now, they do have a repair kit uh, you can reach out to them and get. Now, I've seen some people kind of MacGyver and make their own repair kit with uh, replacing the screws that attach the PCB for the PCI Express riser where the fires are originating um, with zip ties or plastic nylon screws. I would also suggest maybe insulate the entire PCB board with liquid electrical tape and use nylon screws or zip ties to hold it down, and that may work until your repair kit shows up. Um, I'll link below NZXT's uh official page for this in the show sources if you haven't already checked it out so two things we've been waiting for this year cyberpunk 2077 as it's been delayed about 27 times and it probably won't come out till 2077 and rtx 3000 series cards are launched this year but are really hard to get um but amazingly, the two have joined forces again to make a Cyberpunk Edition video card that you can only win through a giveaway. So they are giving away, uh, CD Projekt Red um, for marketing for Cyberpunk 2077 are giving away a Cyberpunk themed Founders Edition 3080 Ti. Now it's a fairly cool looking card. It has like a, like a circuitry look on it, the Cyberpunk logo on the um, top side of the card on the opposite side where the RTX logo is. Um, it's not as extravagant as what they went to with the 2080 Ti that they completely color changed the card. It looks like more so they just stuck a sticker on it. Um, but still pretty cool seeing that NVIDIA and CD Projekt Red are working tightly together on making uh, video game themed video cards. And it'd be really nice if more people would do this because this looks really cool versus your typical gamer style video card. So in previous shows, I've talked about the RTX 3060 Ti uh, was going to be coming. There was some leaked pictures of it, uh, as well as leaked Time Spy and Fire Strike uh, benchmarks, showing it had very close performance of a 3070 at $400 MSRP. And well, that holds true officially. The card has come out and is basically a cut down version of a 3070. It is $400 MSRP in the U.S., uh, here in Canada, it's a little bit more uh, with exchange rate and all that fun stuff, but it holds true of what the leaked benchmark showed of it being in about the ballpark of 10 to 14% of a 3070. Now, what does that mean in relative terms if you have an older card? Well, if you have a 2080 Super, it basically performs the same as that at a much lower price. So if you are someone that's coming from a 1070, a 1070 Ti, or even uh, you know, a 2060, you are gonna get a big uplift in performance. Now, in games, you're basically gonna see basically, and if you're talking, you know, you wanna compare this to Nvidia, AMD graphics cards, it's still slower than 6800 non-XT, but it's also a lot cheaper. Um, it's priced the same as a 5700 XT, but performs way better. So it's, AMD really has nothing at this standpoint to fight against it. But there is the rumored 6700 non-XT and XT cards coming out, and I think those are going to be the cards that AMD will have to fight against this. But because NVIDIA went with the TI naming, I wouldn't doubt there is going to be a 3060 non-TI, which will be slower, probably priced about $50 less, and will help fill in the mid-range. So 
Now you have the mid-range with a 3060 Ti, a 3070, and the high end is 3080 and 3090. So that, that's really nice. And when it comes to performance overall, um, just looking at Tom's Hardware, they have a, an excellent, uh, or not, not Tom's Hardware, but Tom's Hardware and other places like Tech Power Up is another one that also has great roundups of the review of relative performance, uh, everything averaged out. So at you know 4K, it's only 13% behind a 2080 Ti. And you know, a 2080 Ti was a very expensive car just a couple of months ago. And now for $400, you're getting almost 20, 2080 Ti performance or better than a 2080 Super. So that's really cool. 1440p, it's the same story. It's in between a 2080 Super and a 2080 Ti. And at 1080p, it's the same story again. So there is a clear um, kind of pattern. It is lag, does definitely lag behind a 3070, which it should because it's cheaper by $100. Um, it has the same amount of VRAM at eight gigs. Um, and it actually has a pretty decent core clock and boost clock. So let's just go over quick specs, uh, quickly. So core clock is 1410 megahertz, uh, boosts up to, uh, 1665. And I wouldn't doubt with partner cards, you can overclock it further, um, depending on how far Nvidia has really limited it. And the memory clock is at 1750. It has a GA 104 die, eight gigs of GDDR6 memory, eight ROPs, uh, 4864 shader units. So they have the, the next biggest thing with problem with this card is not the price, it's not the performance, because both of those are phenomenal. The biggest problem is availability, just like every other 30 series card, availability has kind of sucked. Every single 6800 series card, availability sucks. The Xbox, the PlayStation, Ryzen 5000, availability has not been that great. So I am hoping availability will get better once they're past the Christmas season and they're able to get more cards here instead of via by plane, probably more cards will come over by boat, which there's gonna be a delay on as it takes time to ship things over here versus planes to get on a plane that's probably here within a day. Um, and then just logistics of distri distribution throughout whatever country it lands at. Um, but I did see some people already got their hands on it locally and instantly, like people are taking pictures of it in their car I have an RTX 3060 and I'm going to sell it for $1,000 on Facebook Marketplace. And it's like, buddy, go get stuffed. And nobody wants that around here because if you're just buying it to resell it to try to make a quick buck, I get it. But you're also kind of a dick bag. So let's round out our NVIDIA news with an RTX 3090. Now, this is not any normal 3090. This is the oddest 3090 that I thought would never exist and I thought we were done with this style of cooling. It's a Asus Turbo 3090. And if you know anything about Asus cards, and when they say turbo on them, it means blower cooler. Yeah, blower cooler on a 3090, a 350 watt TDP card, which is insane. But at least Asus has gone to great lengths to make it as efficient as possible. The blower, the actual heatsink itself is completely copper. It has a vapor chamber. It kind of makes contact to all the major heat points like VRMs, the memory chips that are GDDR6X, as well as the core, of course. And that all goes through the vapor chamber and then into the copper fin structure, um, as well as they made the card as big as possible, measuring up to 26.8 centimeters. So it's quite large and it's, it's it also is 11.3 centimeters tall. So it's a quite a tall card. But the interesting point about this card is it's a true dual slot. So it does not, it's not a two and a half, it's not three, like most 3090s. So if space is of, of your of most concern and you need that level of performance, this is definitely a card to go for. They've also positioned the power connectors on the back of the card and it's two eight pins um, feeding this power hungry beast. So having the, the plugs on the back is also helps with, because the card's so tall, this will most likely be in system integrators, uh, systems from like Dell, HP, things like that, um, or Lenovo. So this is kind of where I wouldn't doubt this is primarily positioned. Um, there is no price currently, and I'd see this probably being on the lower end of 3090 prices um, because it, it's probably most likely gonna feature a very reference style PCB. Um, amazingly, it actually has a higher boost clock than a reference card at 1725. Not much more than the 1695 of reference, but 
it's a little bit more. So the fact that Asus was able to squeeze a bit more out now, depending on what the freaking temperature is going to be this thing, it may be hotter than the sun. But if space is a concern and you want a true dual slot 3090, this is a card for you, maybe? I don't know. I just, I don't see the point of it. I just, I don't. Because I do that. And it's, I put water blocks on everything. But hey, there's a use case for it because they made it. <laughs> well, thank you for watching this week's show. I think it's going to be fairly short. There wasn't much news. There was some cell phone stuff that came out, but like, I really don't care for it. So I'm not going to talk about it. Um, I'll just mainly I cover stuff that I want to talk about that I like. <laughs> so hopefully you guys like it too. Um, hopefully you guys checked out this week's uh, or last week's midweek show, which was about streamer, the uh, Leon Lee streamer plus cables. Um, fairly cool uh, LED RGB uh, power cables. Not the hardest to install, um, but they do take up quite a bit of space and they're not the most flexible, but they are pretty flexible. Um, so in smaller cases, they might be a little more difficult to install. So that's my 30 seconds, but please go check out the video. I'll link it below. As well as on this Wednesday, there is a video coming up of a Ryzen 5600X build. So please check that out. That'll be a midday Wednesday. And yet another thing is, so on my PC, it's been a kind of a slow work in progress of improving the water cooling loop. First thing I did was, uh, for you know, I waited for the fans to come in stock, which were the Noctua NFA-12s. Bought six of those. Those all came in. Then I tore down the entire water cooling loop, flushed it, cleaned all the water blocks, changed some hearts, changed some lines, added a second drain. Makes maintaining this a million times better having a second drain. I can actually get all one liter of the coolant out of the system. Yeah, this holds a liter of water, which is insane. Um, but uh, one of the drains failed. So then I had to drain it again, plug it, and I'm gonna talk about this in the video. <laughs> there was a lot of issues after, and there still is issues. Like my sound card freaking doesn't work anymore. I don't even know why. Uh, but anyways, my sound card doesn't work, which sucks. So I, oh yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. But anyways, I got new drains. Uh, these are dark side uh, push drains. So you just kind of pop, that's it, open. And then pop, closed. Awesome. So unlike a ball valve, ball valves, when you turn it, it, eventually the top part will wear out and leak and then it fails. There's nothing you can do about it. Where this one, it's got O-rings inside of this and it basically it internally goes through it. So there's really no way this can fail unless the O-rings fail. And there's a snap ring here you can take off and then change out the O-rings. So it's very serviceable, uh, which is great. So I bought this from Dasmod, local Canadian water cooling supply store. They carry basically everything all my stuff's bought from there besides the radiators and some of the Corsair stuff because he doesn't carry the Corsair Hydro X. Um, but pretty happy with the quality of these. And I bought two of them. And um, Canada Post took their sweet time getting them to me. But now they're here. And this weekend, I plan on installing them, I hope. Um, I just have to drain my system again, um, which sucks. So it's okay. I'll save as much of the water as possible, fill it up again. And then I have a second liter of the Mod My Wad. Mod my mods, mod water, that's a tongue full. Um, I have a second one liter jug of that to fill up the rest if there is anything that I did lose. So, um, but anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. There will be a video of my PC coming out soon. Uh, just doing that refresh and finally the last parts are in and I hope there is nothing else that's gonna go wrong with it. Um, but if there is, then you get to, I get to film it for you guys, so. It's a win-win, I guess. But I don't want to spend any more money on my computer. I spent a lot of money on fans and now extra fittings and the fittings I bought to change out things. So I don't want to spend any more money on it. I don't want to work on it anymore at this point because I've done a lot of work. So I'm hoping it's going to just stay together and work for another year until I decide to take it apart again. But I might even take it apart sooner than that because I kind of want a 5900X and a new motherboard. Yeah, it never, it never ends. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. See you in the next one. Welcome to Tech Driven. My name is Jagger. <laughs> I can't see a straight face. It's just too... <laughs> <laughs>